Blessed day. I'm Lady Marans. Banishing. Why is it important and why should we do it? Let's have a look. So banishing. The most important thing that you need to learn as you begin a magical work, magical life, is banishing. So why? When you start on a magical road, you light a light, a beacon in the darkness, in the astral. So if you think of it as if it's pitch black, you turn on light outside and what happens? All these bugs, all these insects, all these, all these things start to to come towards the light, are attracted to the light. And that's kind of what happens with yourself on the astral. You begin a magical process, you start to work in a magical way, and that light, that inner light within you, starts to glow and be awakened. And that means that things that are in the darkness, good and bad, are going to be attracted. They're going to go, oh, what's, what's that over there? That wasn't there before. Let's go and have a look, hey, yeah. And that's when people who start a magical process start going, oh, it's all these things, the things are moving, um, um, I feel like I'm being followed, I'm being watched. Well, you probably are, but there's things that you can do to counteract that, to help you along the way. And that is banishing, being able to banish your area uh, of unwanted energies, so I don't want to make you scared. You just need some basic, um, almost like home, um, home security. You don't need to go overboard. You don't need to become paranoid. You don't need to be jumping at shadows at every at every um, turn. Okay, that doesn't do anyone any good. Okay, learning how to banish properly, you'll be okay. Because you've lit this this light you are going to be like a magnet drawn to you because you're an oddity, you're something new to look at. Um, learning how to banish your area and to banish um, energies from yourself means that you can handle those sorts of things. And a lot of the time it'll be like, oh, oh yeah, that's them, I've seen them. Yeah, no biggie. We're gonna go over here and have a look at what's going on over there, okay? So if you learn how to banish and you become um, proficient in that, then no, uh, that's okay. If you are jumping at shadows and you are seeing things in every corner, just remember that what you look for, you will find. So if you continually focus on all oh, the bad entities, all these things are coming towards me, then you're going to find them, okay? You are lighting that beacon a little bit higher and saying, come on over, check me out, okay? So don't focus on the bad, focus on the good. The bad there, yes, but focus on bringing the, the light into yourself, into your, into your area. So when you banish, you take away, but you also put back in those energies that you want to have in that space. We're gonna go through those techniques in a little bit more detail in later videos, but right now we're just going to do an overall. So when it comes to a magical process, you must know how to banish. The first beginnings of when you're learning to be a witch, when you're learning to be a magician, any kind of magical practitioner, you must learn how to banish first. If you don't know how to banish, and then you start invoking or evoking energies, um, spirits, whatever it is that, that, that floats your boat, you need to be able to banish those things. And if you don't know how to banish, then you're in, in a world of shit. So banishing, 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 more banishing. So the first level, when you're in a, a magic circle and you're learning about being a witch, is learning to banish, learning to banish energies. That's the main thing that we work with, banishing, banishing, banishing. So how do we go about this? What are some good ways of doing this? Well, light. 
light is wonderful, okay? So if you're in your house and you're feeling like people are watching you and, and, and shadows are, are forming in, in certain areas, turn on the light, open the windows, let the light come in. Natural light, UV light, is wonderful, okay? The more light that you can put into an area, you can just feel the area lift, okay? So nothing can hide in the shadows, bring in the light, okay? Make sure your house is clean, okay? Uh, get rid of the clutter in the corners, get rid of uh, bits and pieces that, that don't need to be there because energy needs to flow around. And if it gets stuck in corners, it gets stuck in clutter, then that's when that energy starts to stagnate and starts to degenerate. And you start to feel that kind of, uh, and, and a little bit, a little bit kind of nasty and seedy kind of feeling, almost like you've had one too many drinks and the next, the next day you're, you're feeling like a little bit, yeah. All right, so that's what happens in your house, that energy starts to stagnate. So you make sure your house is clean, make sure the house is aerated, it airs, so the air gets to go through, starts to get that, that, that funk out as well, um, and light, and you'll feel the place lightening as you, as you go. Vibration. Um, is another thing. So the energy that is in the house, okay? Now, laughter is the best remedy. You laugh, have fun, be joyful, and that energy permeates the house, okay? So if you've, if you've ever walked into someone's house or walked into some area and you feel, oh, this is really, this is really bad, or you've walked into some um, area um, where two people are and then you go, oh, you've just just had a fight okay you can feel that energy that's there even though they've finished their fight you can feel that energy and it's permeating that area so if you have something that happens continually within a house that's going to be in that area as well and a lot of the times when you have kind of disturbances in your house it can be because you've come to a new house and that energy hasn't been cleared before you you walked in or before you you uh, took possession of the house or it means that you've done something in the house and you've moved certain things which have it's almost like taking the lid off a jar and that energy is now being dispersed out into, into the, um, the area and you're now dealing with whatever happened before. Um, so clearing a house before you actually enter it, uh, a new house, is, is a wonderful thing. You, you, you're clearing out a lot of those, those um, bad juju vibes, so to speak. But when it comes to energy within a, the house, if you're continually fighting, if there's a lot of pain, a lot of um, anger, a lot of, a lot of crying, that energy is going to permeate the house. It's going to be part of the house and you're going to feel it as, a, as an actual uh, a substance when you, when you walk in. So you need to fill that area with laughter, with light, with joy, if you're, if you're having some good sex, fill it with some good sex, all of that sort of stuff, all that happiness, joy, laughter and light will help to fill that room and help to dispel any, any kind of greeblings that may be hanging around. Okay. Fumigation. So we had a bit of um, a, a video on incense before and a, a few incenses. So just fumigate, that's a nice way of doing it as well. Um, sage is, is a, is a go-to for lots of people. Dragon's blood is another one. Um, you know, whatever you feel um, will help to lighten the mood and dispel any, any kind of darkness or, or ill feelings within a, within a room, within a space. Make sure that the windows are open as well and you don't want your, your uh, fire alarms going off. So make sure that there's light, there's windows, and if there is anything that happens to be in the, the space and the, you're fumigating, the windows that are open lets that go out. You don't want to have all the windows closed and you're fumigating and then what you do is you create a caged animal, okay? Let it out, okay? Let the bird go free, let the, let the cat out, make sure that there's a, a space for it to get out. 
when you're fumigating. The vibration, music, laughter, singing bowls, all of that sort of thing that will, that will help to then fill that space once again with energy that is conducive to, your, to yourself, to, to happiness, to laughter and to joy. All right, you've created a, a void by pushing in that uh, and banishing that energy. Now you want to bring it back in with some, some good energy. On a personal level, what you need to start doing every day, and so it becomes a habit and becomes something that your subconscious can do without you consciously thinking of, is to do some kind of personal cleansing. So it can be uh, in the beginning of the day when you're having a shower and just visualizing the water going down your body and as it goes down your body, all, all uh, darkness and negativity just falls out of your body and down into the drain and out and to be converted into to new, new types of energy. All of that just falls away. You can just feel yourself just going from your head down all the way down, just getting rid of all of that energy. Uh, there's different things of, like a self-blessing that you can do um, for yourself at the same time. Um, um, doing it in the shower just makes it a little bit more uh, real and, and, and easy to visualise. But you can do that just in the morning to yourself. You can do it at night. Um, you can do it any time when you feel that you need to just centre and recalibrate and maybe just um, just lighten up a little bit. Um, spiritual baths also help, so certain herbs and, and um, essential oils used as a bath just to cleanse the aura, to cleanse the body, will help to lighten up and, and to, um, to banish any kind of uh, negativity that may be just like hanging on, you might need to scrub it off a little bit more. Um, but if you're doing daily cleanses, it shouldn't be too much of a worry. Every now and again, you might want to do a little bit of a hardcore clean, but but uh, daily, daily cleanses will, will get most of those sorts of things. Um, the lesser banishing, the lesser banishing ritual is another one. Um, any kind of banishing ritual that you, you may have learnt um, will be another um, way of doing that. And the, the problem is that the more you banish, the more your light becomes uh, brighter. But that's fine because the more you learn how to banish, the more you become comfortable with that, then the easier it is to get rid of certain things that you're, you're not wanting. Now, there are certain times when um, you are a little bit more vulnerable. And uh, that is uh, at night, funnily enough, when you're asleep. And it's usually between the hours, around about between the hours of two to maybe four in the morning, when you, uh, when most people are at their deep sleep. So if there is anything that is going to be uh, directed at you or is going to go, oh, let's have a look at this, then that's the time that it usually happens um, when you're when you're in that vulnerable state. Uh, but that's okay because there's ways around it. There's thing called shielding. Uh, you can shield yourself and you can train yourself to put up your shields in when you go to sleep so that you are protected um, as you as you sleep um, and we'll go through shielding a little bit more in another video because I think this is going a little bit too long um, but we have shielding you have different things like wearing hematite that can help with um, repelling negative negativity and just uh, protecting your aura. You can think of it almost like a shield in itself. Um, and there's also selenite. Selenite is really nice um, if you have some that you can sleep near, have it beside your bed, and it just keeps the area nice and clean. Um, if you have enough, it almost looks like uh, Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Um, so uh, you can have one of those uh, in your bedroom as well. So that's banishing, why we do it and why it's so important. We'll go through a few techniques in a little bit more detail in um, videos to come. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, merry meet, merry part and merry meet again. Blessed be. Send that beautiful energy up into the heavens. It's another very powerful cleansing incense that's often used by witches is dragon's blood. Dragon's blood